All right. So you guys have met with Ms. Johnson. You have agreed on 12,000 new DNs. Uh, if you get everything back within 48 hours, she'll actually bump that up to 15,000. During the meet, it was discovered that what is believed to be the, uh, the exit flight out of there got shot down with a service-to-air missile. And was this flight coming in to land at the facility or somewhere else? Uh, somewhere are. else. Okay, so was it like, hey, we're going to pick you up in the, in the courtyard and get in and fly out? No, not, not like a prison break style where we just fly into the wait area and, and fly out. No, yeah. this is definitely uh, further away. Uh, if you would like to roll area knowledge, you might be able to recognize the area. Okay. Was this close enough that they could they would have ran to the uh, chopper? Or they would have to switch vehicles? Uh, you really don't know, uh, because there was no footage of how, of once they exited the building, there was nothing that you could see from that. So you're really not sure. Um, I mean, from like the potential where the chopper was going to the distance from the chopper was going to the facility. I'm not going to know that. Yeah. You guys, you have no way of really telling that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, well, um, on the on uh, the ride over, we would ask what Penn thinks about these augments, at the, or these at the very least, do they look like augments? From what you can mm. see on the tape. Hmm. All right, this will be an anatomy because that's only slightly better than my biotech. And to make sure, D boss, e. that uh, six hits that was for your area knowledge. Yeah. Uh, you would say Fort Lewis. Like right along the coast. Mm. That's where they were. Head. That's where the chopper was. Yep. Yeah. Well, it, was, I mean, it, was, me, it was flying in from the coast to get you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it could have been maybe like the southernmost part of Tacoma, but it, it feels kind of Fort Lewisy to you. Like, like it was flying from Fort Lewis or to Fort Lewis. Like it was flying uh, north along the coast, uh, right at that that point where yeah. Fort Lewis meets Tacoma. Yeah. Just like uh, like uh, southeast of Oro Bay or whatever. Correct that kind of spot. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Like not not quite as far as Dupont. Like definitely along the coast. Like you can see the water in the distance. Uh, but you're yeah. guessing it was like that. Just that part of uh, Fort Lewis. Mm -hmm. This uh, chopper. Uh, this chopper that I shot down. But what was the make of it? Uh, it was more of a cargo style helicopter, like very much a uh, nondescript. You see these in the air all the time, the exact kind of thing that you would want to not gather attention. So, so it wasn't obviously a military helicopter. No, there was no way. To, it was definitely not a military helicopter. Still doesn't mean it didn't come from Fort Lewis, though. I mean, I mean, chances are it probably didn't, as these guys are, you know, are criminals, and Fort Lewis is an active military installation. Um, don't it's, mean it's, probably, not... it's probably on a boat. Out, it's it's probably something to do with a boat out in the water somewhere, or 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 maybe out from one of the SSC out Rimmer Islands. That could do it as well. Yeah, Fort Lewis might have actually shot him down. They flew that close in, and that's when they got shot down. Well, it was a surface-to-air missile. Yeah, yeah. I They're mean, probably the ones who shot him down. Well, I mean, remember, gangers have those these days. You know, Sams aren't that <laughs> aren't, aren't particularly uncommon. Everybody has them. They just, there's just trucks of them. They're everywhere. And I just go to Stuffer yeah. Shack. You know, they have I know, I, uh, I do know a sergeant in, at Fort Lewis who, if they shot down a helicopter coming from the sea, they might have sent, uh, I don't know, called the Coast Guard to go look at him. He might know something. Yeah, so that's all option. Because that whole base would be on, a, would be all buzzing around if they shot down a helicopter. Well, let's take care of Penn's roll. That was five hits on anatomy. Yep. Uh, you can tell this is some very, very heavy modification. Biomods? Uh, it would be biomods. Uh, some of it, ooh. it... Okay, so biomods are cool. Like, it looks like, you know, you changed a thing that was there. This stuff almost feels, like, genetic to you. Uh, because biomods are very specific. Like, you, you say, I want... 13 hairs to grow right here and 13 hairs will grow right there. Whereas with genetics, it's more, I want some hair right here and what your body makes, your body makes. Uh, that's kind of the vibe that you got specifically from Dinosaur Guy, 
uh, because he has that very just heavy, almost rock-like skin. It's not smooth. It's not beautiful. It's not like, you know, the the dragons and the trids where they're just they look really fucking cool. Uh, it's not this my is... rank for or rating for ortho skin. Yeah, it, this mm-hmm. this would be more like let nature tell Mother Nature I need to be as tough as possible and see what Mother Nature does to your skin kind of feel. Hmm. Okay, but oh, very, well. it, I mean it it's it, it could be just really weirdly done biomods, but you kind of get the feeling that this is more genetic than just stuff being stapled onto the body. But 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 still augmentation. Yes, you can definitely okay. tell there is the frame of metahuman underneath. This does not feel like a new species or anything. Okay, all right, yeah, that searched. Th- that was the core of what I was asking because I have a contact who uh, specializes in augmentation. Um, and what I want to do is on the, is on the thing over. I want to I'd want to pick one mod from each of the guys. Not like you know, I'm not I'm not giving this. I'm not giving them like an itemized list or anything. Right of like the ideas of what we're seeing, but like one one idea for each of them, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. And I'm gonna ask, uh, hey, uh, I know this uh, sounds a little out of place, but but do you know anyone? Who, but do you know anyone who sells like you know these super weird ass uh, mods? Uh, you know, like you, you know, like shit like this. And she'll give like she'll give those three in addition to like half a dozen others that aren't affiliated with these guys. You know what I mean? No, like, are, you, oh, are you sending images or just like a description? Description. I'm not giving actual images. That's too much. He's not high enough loyalty for me to do that yet. <laughs> uh, go ahead and do that 13 dice thing and we'll see what he says to you. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You're, you're talking about some, sounds like some bio sculpting, like some, some Evo culture dreck. Uh, yeah. I, I really can't tell you just, just from telling me about this stuff. You, you know, you got to use like the science words if you want me to understand you, but. I don't know. It sounds like some evil culture crap. Uh, would we be able to get an actual science word from Penn? Sure. Are you let, are you letting Penn know that you are sending all this to a contact? I'm letting Penn know that I'm calling a guy who knows about augments. Well, from what I'm looking at, this stuff looks like it was grown into the person in a sort of organic way. Which speaks to something a little deeper, I think. Penn, it also sounds like like Ringside's talking to like a almost like a doctor kind of person about this. Like, why why go to a doctor? You're sitting right there. What? What? Yeah, why? I'm right here. I can help you with do these you, things. Do you, do you move do you move cargo ships of biomods up and down the coast? No, but Didn't fucking I think know. so. Uh, to ringside your your contact will just say like look just just show me what you want and i'll I'll see if i can get it for you but like uh, you know you're, you're talking about horns and 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 dragon people like i yeah just go down to to you know the nightingales or something go down to the mall and you can get some of that stuff done oh all right we will uh uh we will thank him Sorry about that, Pen. She's not a nice person. <laughs> I love, I so love. The, negative qualities are what make this game so enjoyable to me. Yeah. So what gets so, me is actually not the the lizard, or the dinosaur. It's the little weird one. Because I don't think they have mods for making your head enormous and your limbs all tiny. Probably not. Mm-mm. He's the first one that has to die anyway, and he was the one who had the case. So he's probably the one in charge. So, so uh... Thinking... Go ahead, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. So I'm thinking, especially with how they flipped out when I said genetics, maybe they, these are some kind of lab experiments they're doing. I mean, especially if they were stealing uh, embryos or something. They said viable. That's that's a word for like babies, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm I'm I, I'm gonna give you a hint that I learned uh, you know in prison. Don't ask fucking questions about deals that your bosses are doing. I'm gonna give you a hint there, okay? Well, yeah, I'm not gonna ask the Jay about this shit that they got set off. I'm just saying. Yeah, no, it's a good idea. 
it's 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 definitely uh, something to look into. There might be a connection there. All right. Well, I think we're checking out this place to uh, to uh, see what happened. Uh, look for signatures and see if we can find any uh, any other uh, reasonable evidence. Um, on the way over, he says a 19 minute flight. Correct. I would like to do at least try to do at least one tier three search. Um, I should be able to do multiple ones if I do it fast enough. Okay, um, I'd okay. like to start searching on like the, the the lizard lady because if these were voluntarily mods, something they might be like, hey, look at look at my sexy snake body. Um, and I know these guys are, you know, competent, you know, combatants. Browses on as well. Wow. So you, uh, you're like one foot on the stair going into the helicopter when that thing comes back. Uh, just so you know, the helicopter, incredibly comfortable. We're talking luxury interior on this thing. Miss Johnson does not go with you. Uh, when the door closes, the windows are blacked out. So you cannot see outside of the helicopter. Mm-hmm. All you really have is the sensation of of like that slight g force pressure on your chest as the helicopter accelerates away. Uh, so on a T three search for the sort of snaky lady, which my nickname for her is Slither because I am creative that way. Uh, there is absolutely no name attached to her. Uh, the closest you can come up with are more urban legendy kind of things about. Um, an African, uh, almost like avenging spirit sort of thing, but more like murders the wicked, like almost, almost like, like, like punishment. Uh, and it said that it's a, uh, a woman who made a deal with a snake to become a snake in exchange for letting the snake become like a woman. Uh, like there's a whole lot of mysticism that goes behind it, but basically the thing that you're, co- you're honing in on is more about the claws and the drinking of the blood. Mm-hmm. But you definitely you're getting a few. Um, some of them have the feel of wives' tales. Some of them have the feel of bullshit stories, and some of them feel more like somebody terrified was trying to explain what they saw. Okay. But coming out of uh, Ethiopia, Somalia, uh, is where the stories originate and spreading all around Africa. I didn't see any like stories popping up from Seattle or anything like that in the last couple of days. Completely out of character on a T three search. No. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's worth doing searches on everybody else, but um, I will ask them as we're getting on the thing if, they can, if I can get any extra video, unedited video of the streets of the outer areas within the day or two before and afterwards. And if they have, if they've grabbed any video from, it, from the surrounding area. Because we wa- we watch this an edited highlight reel. Yes, that that's the kind of thing you can ask for once you guys land. Okay. Uh, you should be able to ask for that. Okay. And then I was going to search. I'll search. I've have time to search for another one. All right. Uh, on the uh, the guy I nicknamed Horns or Cranium. Let's just do Horns. All right, Horns. Wow, very much a similar story to Slither. Uh, except less like avenging spirit and more like avatar of destruction kind of thing. Uh, there are a couple of stories and one very grainy video of what looks like the same guy from from this lab, uh, pretty much destroying a village all by himself. Uh, the geotags put him in Eastern Africa, and there is one story rumoring that he was up somewhere near Spain, France kind of area once but very much smash, crush everything. Uh, The thing that's even more horrifying is their stories of this thing actually eating gobbets of flesh from those that it killed and like not waiting necessarily till they were dead to do so, but actively trying to eat people as it kills them. Mm -hmm. These mystic stories about the snake and other things, how far do they go back? They go back 20 years or a thousand year old story? Of... For what feels similar, you'd say four years. Now, there are stories that go back, you know, 200 years ago, this tribe had a story about a snake that turned into a person. But it, mm-hmm. that has more of a spirity kind of feel to it. Like it would glide through the trees and it would appear in your house kind of thing. Uh, for the last four years, the stories are more, you know, it it pulls your door off the hinges and it comes in and it slits everybody's throat and it drinks the blood. 
So yes, the story <laughs> the stories are much older, but there is it, it's almost like there's a modern feel going back about four years. So African chupacabras. Sure, we can go with that. And so, if I have the time to finish off the last search on the uh, the Modoc. Yeah, you will just be, you, you can feel the helicopter coming in to land uh, when you're finishing up the third search. Uh, this guy has very, very little that's actually known about him. Uh, the There was only one story that actually had a description that said something about having the mind of seven men. Uh, and it was translated from one of the, the Eastern Bush languages, which could be the mind, like the mental capacity, or it could be the mind, like the physical head of seven men. And that's what you keyed in and you started listening. And it basically said that he was a master of deception and that people would murder their own families thinking they were their enemies. This is telling more and more like an African hit squad that's got breaking bad or error either doing this as government sponsored or doing this because they're running from the government. Perhaps you we'll guys see. know, you guys know anybody that would know anything about international assassins. The, the criminal boxer just looks at you. I know smuggler contact who <laughs> might know like, a, cause these guys had it. They're from Africa. They got to get smuggled in here somehow. So, uh, Maybe you guys have a smuggler contact or something that uh, that word of the wire that a package that everybody was told to stay away from is was smuggled in a couple of days ago or so. Uh, I know a guy who might know something. He's not a exactly a smuggler, but goes along with some common smuggling routes. I mean, but what we saw of these guys, and what I saw and what I found on the internet, these guys are fucking hitters. And these guys are. You know, a team of very distinct, very loud, very psychologically important hitters. And you don't move people like this into another country to do a job uh, without somebody, you know, drawing some sort of attention or somebody getting told not to not to look at a certain package or something. Well, that's something we can certainly look into. Uh, but I think for now we've uh, arrived at the yeah. place, right? Yep. All right, so the doors will pop open. There is armed security outside. Uh, there is what you are guessing is the guy in charge, uh, simply because he looks older and meaner than everybody else who's there. And he is yelling onto a physical comm link. Um, standard, I don't care what corporate says. I'm in charge of security. We don't need freelancers. And then his face will go very red. And you'll hear the, the very... The very solid words of, if that's a direct order, I will allow them in. And he will put his comm link away and he will look at you. <sighs> Yo, we're here to check this place out. Get the fuck out of the way. Fragging piece of direct criminals, each and every one of you. That's what you are. Yeah, I'm also getting paid more than you. <laughs> I walk past him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, as I love the characters you make. They always make me so happy. Oh, oh, at this point, we're also wearing our uh, illegal machine gun uh, slung over our body. So, you know. <laughs> Wait, well, I, well, sorry, sorry. This, this place is E.T., right? Uh, nobody ever said one way or the other. We don't know who this okay. place is or who we're working yeah. for, so. It's. It's fine. Don't worry about it. No one here is calling the cops. This is not the kind of place that calls the cops. I mean, if, we, if we can get an idea of the corporate logo or something, you know, find out, you know, hey, this is a front for the Somal Ethiopian Somalia government biotech lab, and they actually make orc babies to feed Osmodonia or something. So as you were walking from the landing pad toward the building, it so happens that in giant letters in front of their bottom lit in a beautiful sort of way, you see Tag C Genetic Research. Okay. Helping tomorrow's farmers today. Yep. Okay. Look, look, sometimes you need people who can uh, liberate biological material for fertilization, you know. Hey, hey Az, does, does that name ring yep. any bells? Uh, I'm I'm sure it should, but it doesn't. I'm sorry. T A G C. 
think, think, what? Think biology. Think, think genetics. Oh biology. yeah, 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 yeah. It's the base pairs. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I got, I got to be smart and use science words. Yay. <laughs> Sorry, man. I, I, that's not. I don't. I, 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 uh, I do. I do almost no work with biochemistry, so it's not the kind of thing I usually think about. <laughs> So uh, going in, there is a security detachment that will go with you, uh, and they keep looking back from the the captain who is just standing angrily beside the helicopter, and they're looking back at the four of you. This this ragtag group. I mean, you have ringside with a with a light machine gun slung over a shoulder, and you have Hammerhead, who is this huge troll wearing a very fine suit and carrying a briefcase. Yep. You have a sort of frumpy little woman in pen, and I mean, it's it's, it's kind of a weird group. Um, I'm gonna go up to the uh, the captain in charge as we're walking by. Say, my man, come here, come here. Now, I need you to get me the unedited video from the day before of the outside perimeters and the day and the up to the current time and of the of the hit and up to the current time. If you do that for me. Uh, my apologies, sir, but that is a security concern that you are not cleared to have access to. Were we, were we not told that we were going to be coming down here to investigate the guy who just murdered half your fucking crew? <sighs> Look, you're here to take care of those freaks. You take care of those freaks, okay? Yeah, and in order to take care of those freaks, I had to know how they got away. They had to be cased in this place. They know exactly where to go and how to get through, I mean, how to cut through your security. Which means they had a, their vehicle out here at some point that you fucking missed. Now, the way to find them is to go through it. They fucking fine tooth comb, find the vehicle that was there before, the various vehicle that was there now, and find out how they got out of here. His face is seven different shades of red right now. And he'll just sputter. All right, I'll. Yes, sir, I'll get it right over to you, sir. And he will turn his Thanks. back and pull out his comm link and have a very gritted tooth conversation with someone. So as you guys are led into the building, uh, there is no law enforcement here, but there is a lot of what appears to be private security. Uh, yep, going, makes uh, sense. Going up to the front doors. Uh, I mean, there's there's people not necessarily like dusting for prints, but doing the uh, the shadow run version of trying to take samples, and everybody is just like you can you can literally see giant footprints in in the dirt from when the the dinosaur guy stepped off the uh, the, the little stone path like i mean this it it's pretty clear that these things were not trying to hide their exit like there's there's giant footprints and there's broken branches and it, it has like this sense of conceit and arrogance to it but as they lead you in, it is to uh, to to coin a phrase, a fucking bloodbath inside here. All right. Um, the the best tally that you guys got was about a dozen bodies. It's kind of hard to tell because every time you encounter dead bodies, they have been rent into pieces. Uh, ringside on two hits. Are assume you are you referring to the the dinosaur thing? Yeah. Why not? Uh, it looked like absolutely no training whatsoever. It was almost animalistic in the way it fought. Okay, that's good to know. So yeah, basically there was no, like, you know, keep your left hand up by your, your cheekbone and your right hand back and, you know, throw out the, the heel when you, when you flare your punches. Nothing, nothing like that. Fair. Hey, yes. Mm -hmm. Smells like blood. I love it, Mark. I was gonna roll a small and attack this to see if these guys were looked like they were operating as a more of a, as a team, or were they more, more like three individuals just doing their shit with the same goal? Um, that's actually a clever idea. So on two hits of small units. Uh, now keep in mind you never you guys never saw a cranium in the video when they were yeah, outside of that, that final lab. He only appeared when it came time to get what appeared to be those samples. As for the other two. Uh, it was very obvious that, that the big dude with all the horns, he was the meat wall. He was the one who would go first. And the the snake-like lady was almost like hitting from the angles. 
like definitely coming around and going from a low angle to high or a high angle to low, uh, fighting more like a knife fighter, whereas the the guy with all the horns was fighting more like a dude who had a piece of rebar. Like it was very much savage. Yeah. Absorb all the fury on him, and then all the precision hits were done by the snake lady. Okay. But there, there is coordination. With it. Yeah, okay. it 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 yeah, two hits you really can't tell, but if you had if you had yeah. to put money on it, you would say that they were working together f- based on experience, like not working together like we just got hired for the same job, but like they knew how to work with each other. Yeah. Okay. But you guys will be led all the way to the uh, that lab where they use the breaching charges, um, and everything in here it it feels like people were getting killed for absolutely no reason. I mean, you had the cleaning lady who was killed and ripped in half and part of her was in the trash can and part of her was in the sink. Like there is, are the bodies still here? Uh, The bodies are in the process of being bagged up, but the smell of blood and awful is everywhere. Yeah. Hammer's going to probably walk up to if there's any chunks that are say, haven't been picked up in any of the pools of blood. He's probably going to approach one of those. Wonder if they brought their explosives locally or brought it in from Africa. Probably locally. That's something we can use. Does anyone want to stop me from being evidence? No. Um, um, I don't give a shit. Hammer. Mm. Pen, pen leans. Hammer, what are you doing? Food. That's not uh, food. Have a strawberry. Red. Uh, uh. Strawberries are red. Uh, Hammer will take the strawberry and smell that, and the st- and stand up from the crouch he was in over a pool of blood with some chunks of person still there. Oh, uh, thanks. Uh, and we'll stand up. I'm going to turn off my sense of smell. Mm-hmm. I'm going to start seeing if I can't figure out what's up on the other plane. The other. Capital Don't letters. Eat people. <laughs> so if that... you would like, you are welcome to throw out some ascenting dice. Would aura reading come in handy here? Mm. Just to see. This is more of a spell signature would apply. Okay. As I understand it, aura reading is more like reading a person's aura, so they would have to be present for that. That's fair. Hey. Yes. You see quite a few of them. Hmm. Do they all feel kind of the, like they came from the same person? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It it has the same smell, the same taste. It it feels like one person was casting a lot of magic here. Okay. Uh-huh. Now at this point, the signatures are, if I'm doing math right, an hour and a half old, and they are still vivid and bright to you. That I'm gonna. Is... Hmm. If you give that, if you say that over DNI, I'm going to say, uh, uh, I heard, you know, what's about magic shit stuff that, you know, they, they, they leave, they leave traces when they cast them, when, when they cast a spell, when they let go of a spell, right? Isn't that how it works? Like you make somebody invisible, gonna... it leaves a signature, and then when you drop the spell, it leaves, and it becomes visible again, it leaves a signature again, right? Pen's going to stare at you kind of blankly because, I don't know, I didn't study magic. Oh, uh, that's just what I've heard. That's thing that I can do. Uh, from other from mages and stuff. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm not a mage, I'm a chemist. <laughs> uh, it goes without saying that the person who casts this magic, their magic rating is much higher than yours. Yep. As I said, not They're not, not saying people. a lot, but yeah, it's, it's it is much higher than yours. Uh, and 
pretty much at every scene of of death and carnage, you are picking up a spell signature of some sort, uh, either one or two spells. Okay. Uh, when you guys get to the lab at which the breaching charges were used, um, just even from around the corner, you can just feel how big the spell had to have been. Um, it just because it's still like it's it's pressing on your mind as you walk up toward it. And it is glowing bright as the noontime sun. Hmm. So if we're going to continue into the lab, there are some other sciencey looking people who are kind of muttering to each other and they're looking over the actual physical computer terminals. Um, upon seeing like an actual physical terminal, it'll click to you that there's no wireless in here. Which isn't really a big deal. I mean, you would expect a research lab to have the wireless inhibiting paint on the walls and, and all of that stuff. But these are actual physical terminals with cables and that kind of shit. Uh, when do, doing all my perception stuff, did I notice anything that didn't seem to be uh, part of the blood that looked like something might have been dropped or anything like that? Unfortunately, no. Rip. Can I do the same in this room? Sure. Yeah, and just so you know, guys, you're welcome to if there's anything that you would like to roll, but be all by all means, you're you're welcome to. Uh, did we see if the guards or whoever they were fighting, the had actually put up a fight, actually landed a hit on any one of these guys? Uh, if they did, it had zero effect. So one thing I could suggest is these guys are missed their flight out, so they're running to ground, and they're gonna have to go through the streets to do it, which means more magic, more spells, more signatures. Uh, they cast a spell before they left out, and that might have left a signature whenever they dropped it somewhere else. We might be able to find some sort of breadcrumb trail. I don't know. If you're lucky. Hey, mm -hmm. man. Hey, man. I don't know shit about magic. I mean, they met it. They met again. They how we were casting stuff outside the facility as well to get in and on their way out. More likely than not. Yeah. And they might be like, like relying pretty heavy on that. Cause these guys can't just like walk into a stuffer shack and hang out for a couple hours while they arrange their new exit strategy. Right. Yes. They're like, like freaks. They've got to either be headed towards the barrens or head somewhere low and they're going to be using magic to get there. That would follow to reason, yes. I don't know. Just saying. It might be worth looking around the area around the facility to see if we can, see if we can find a uh, astral breadcrumb trail. Like I said, man, you can take a look. I don't know shit about magic. I want to find something they left here or something we can trace. They had to buy it from somewhere. They had to talk to someone. They have to be hiding out somewhere because those fucking freaks can't go out on the street. And once you find where they're hiding out, I'm going to kick in the door. That dude with the big head is going to get shot in the face. And then we're going to take the other two. Yeah, I don't think they were planning on staying in Seattle long. They were, they were going to fly out. Um, chemical trace on those explosives, maybe. I don't know. I don't know about chemical stuff. Let's see if we can find out, you know. Yo, yo, yo. Still like that. Yo, yo, boys. What the fuck is that? Uh, and she's gonna point to. Uh, is this uh, was this one of the coolers that like was like in the in the uh, on like the cabinet that all the other shit was in? Like uh, it, what, it was like around there. The the one that had the samples in it was sitting on top of this one. Okay. Uh, it it as you think back to the video, he actually because he's you know he's short, he's dwarf size. Yeah. Uh, put his hand on one and sort of levered himself up to open the one that from which he took the samples. Uh, so right. It's that lower one that you that's where you spotted it. All right, yo, that fucking that fucking mage dwarf, dude, dude, short as fuck. He ain't like us. And and uh, she'll point to and she'll like look at hammer. So uh, so uh, he so uh, he had to move that thing to get to whatever that 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 cold shit he stole was. Look at that. There's a fucking fingerprint on that shit. And she'll point at it with her gun. Okay. The uh, security team gets really interested when you say that. Yeah, it's almost like I'm getting paid more than you for a fucking reason. We're going to say that, Dick. Uh, I'm going to say, Pen, uh, you said you were a chemist, right? Yes. Do you have anything to take a sample of 
the residue from those explosives? Always. I mean, if we can get their signature, maybe we can run it through a database or something. I can maybe I can get into a database or something, try to see if it's from Africa or they maybe they bought it here locally. Sure, I can see if I can't collect anything. I, I don't I don't imagine these guys have been hanging around Seattle for very long. So they probably had to pick it up quick. So try to also uh, grab a copy of that print. That might that 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 would be another useful piece of info. Mm-hmm. And just so you know, in the future, because this is actually technology we use nowadays with law enforcement, you don't have to do the brush with the powder and the little sticky tape on a print. You could literally take a photo of it, and that's all you really need to do for a print. Nice. Oh, that's Lord. for chemistry, and that's a. Uh... That's my mental limit, I believe. Yeah, that's my mental limit. Okay, so you're taking a sample of explosives residue. Um, yeah, you are able to find a few places where uh, it's not just carbon and soot. You can tell that well, this looks like an undetonated bit of this here, and okay, a little bit over here. So you have some samples. All right. Uh, does anybody have demolitions or... Um, Armorer even might help. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Armor. man. I'm getting I'm getting two skills a day, but the character's new. I still need a few more days. <laughs> <laughs> I get engineering. Um, it's a little bit too much of a stretch for engineering. I get spike uh, trade craft for spice stuff. Hey, two hits. Wait, on is this a weapons accessory? No. Oh well. Um, this is uh, it's kind of oh god, what is it called? Um, you you you're familiar. You you read a magazine about it. It's for uh, breaching charges. It's not it's not like necessarily like C twelve, but it's like C twelve, just because it fills the little crevices of these big bars of metal that you put on the the thing that you want to blow up and blow a hole through. Yeah, this is definitely like a breaching charge that had a a, a high yield explosive put in it. Dead cord or foam? Um, oh God, this is where my my real world knowledge gets a little creepy. Uh, a breaching charge is a different type of explosive. Uh, it's designed to be very directional. Basically, you use almost like angle iron as the frame, uh, and uh-huh. the the inside angle part of it is filled with an explosive that is generally high power but low velocity. It's designed to cut uh, a big swath uh-huh. along the bar. Uh, but you can tell this is definitely a a breaching charge. It wasn't just somebody smeared plastic explosives and hoped it blew it up. It's a cutting charge, yeah. Well, um, a, a, it's it's close to a cutting charge. Breaching charges are a little bit different, but yeah, it's close enough for government work. I mean, we built them. It's you know, you put dead cord into the thing and into a water packet and put it on there, or you use. I've I've seen it done with C four and 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 uh, fence posts, fence poles. I can never but those were no Bangalore blades. But those were Bangalore blades because 187 shot all, used all the Bangalore blades. <laughs> so we had, we had to sit there with the engineers and make new ones. Um, yeah, okay. So basically what I was getting at with that, because I, I think I might have been getting a little too technical, uh, this didn't feel like some jury-rigged crap, like just yeah, smear this it on real the wall. Shit. This was a real charge. This, this might have been put together. They might have gone to a third party to put this together. Yep, fair. Um, if anybody has a knows anything about that. Oh, well, um, I mean, we can look into it. We have we have fixers who can, who we can use to network for people. That's all good info. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so we have the fingerprint. We have that. We have the signature. Uh. Did I notice anything else? Uh, not really. Okay. I mean, if there's anything specific you guys want to look for, let me know, and I'll see if you can find it. Um, off of the top of my head, I am not thinking of anything. <clears throat> um, I would like to go outside and look at the building. Look at the buildings around this place. See if any of those buildings might have footage I might need to hack into and steal. Well, this building is surrounded by trees, specifically open grass, and okay. that, that magical number of 100 yards out. 
is where the tree line starts. Great big tall pines, just luscious green trees everywhere you can see. Uh, you do not actually see any other buildings around here. On the meters doesn't mean you can't make a perception. It just means you need to make a roll for it. That uh, hammer would like to take out, uh, open his briefcase up and pull out his ballistic mask and have it uh, use its old factory scanner to sniff since he can't uh, do so safely himself right now. Uh, can I return to where I saw these guys come in? Like, you know, like that first frame? Yes, it is the hallway right outside of the employee lounge. I'm going to try and just track how they got in, see if any, see if anything got left that way. Okay, you can follow it. You go back to the lounge. Uh, you're looking at, because the, the lounge is one of those, like there's a hallway to the north and a hallway to the south. It's one of those in-between rooms with two points of entry. Mm -hmm. uh, the bodies are at like the, the southern hallway, if you will. Uh, you look at the door on the northern part on five hits. And you can see along the door frame where the dude with all the horns clearly didn't fit through the standard door, and he scraped it up with the uh, the horns coming off of his arms. Mm -hmm. So you look out there, and you look uh, this way, look down that way, and looking off to the right, it's a long hallway that seems to lead to the uh, like you know how there's always the the dumpster behind the building. There has to be a rear exit to get out there. Uh, it's that's like the only thing that's, that's at the end of this hallway. Okay, um, but going up and investigating the door, uh, it it just looks like a standard exit door. It has the little push bar on the uh, the inside, uh, just to save you the time. On the outside, there is a handle, but you have to be uh, either use the badge or get buzzed in from the security desk. Uh, but it's not like just a simple doorknob to open it up or anything. It does does it look like uh, this uh, item had like its case removed and then put back on? By any chance, uh, for something like that, I would need some kind of locksmith or hardware check. Yeah, ye locksmith it. No, can I try again? I'm, uh, I'm, am I allowed to try again? Y yes, you can. It, it's just this is the second time where it's ten not, dice with fine. zero hits. By all means, you're you're welcome to. All right, there we go. That's a lot better. Uh, no, this does not appear to have been tampered with. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, when you look at, um, like, you put armor all on the dashboard of your car, and it's all shiny, and it's beautiful, and then, you know, your your five-year-old is is sitting in the front seat because his mom isn't in the car, so daddy lets him do things he's not technically allowed to do yet, mm -hmm. and because your little five-year-old is, is just like his daddy, decides to put his feet up on the dashboard, and his feet were dirty, so it puts, like, smudges on the dashboard. That's kind of what this casing looks like. It looks like something was smeared like 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 smeary hands touched it like the kind of hands that some weird uh, snake freak might have <laughs> more like like unusually tiny chubby finger kind of things oh ooh, 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 do i see a fingerprint here uh, kind of i mean you're not really a fingerprintologist but yeah you see you see a couple of swirls and whirls <laughs> call her over she would probably say it in order that first, and and then realize and be like, "Shit, what kind of fucking what kind of fucking magic op affects locks?" So, uh, one of the members of the security team will actually come up to D boss at this point, and he has a chip, and he goes, uh, "This is this is all the footage, sir, as as requested, sir." Thank you. Um, I don't. I don't okay, I don't know how fast I'm going to be able to take you through this, but uh. Just looking from the outer perimeter, is there, outside of just lurking in the woods, is there a place where somebody might be able to get eyes on this facility? Like, hey, there's a building 100 meters over there, and they could there just are, sit on top of that building. There are absolutely no other buildings that are visible from where you guys are. This is very much one of those beautiful... We're in the middle of fucking nowhere. We're, we're in the country, so of course everybody has 100 acres because it's wide open country. Why not? And there's no... There's no fucking roads to anywhere. There is a road leading out from the facility, but it, it goes that hundred yards through the grass. It's actually a very well-kept road, too. It's not like a dirt road or anything. Uh, and then it goes through the trees, and you lose sight of it. So these guys had to be either fucking doing drone reconnaissance or uh, recon from the woods 
or this was a prepackaged deal and they just sent him in. I will. I don't know what to look for in these in this camera data now. So I was expecting like the facility to be like a normal facility where you're like, oh, there's traffic coming and going. Analyze the traffic and find out where the runner was, or like there's a stuffer shack across the street and the, find the suspicious looking guy at the stuffer shack. But uh, well, the uh, the tip you had asked for all of the video footage. Uh, basically, each of the files is is 12 hour blocks of and it lists like a camera like break room one break room two uh north hallway facing west north hallway facing east do they have outer perimeter cameras of course they do um cameras doing the approach to the back door the one that you think they came in there is one directly uh, above the door um directly above the door but not out to the field out to the wood line nope I mean, it's 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 a fisheye lens, so it, it looks down, so it's getting directly below the door, and uh, thirty feet out from the building, you would guess, still in the the paved asphalt part. Do they have any cameras that are watching the woodland itself? Not that you can tell. Okay. Um, I thought they were security design or something like this, and how I would think of how I would break this security if I was coming in. Now, uh, Hez, on your old factory scan, uh, a very, very oily, like, like equal parts oily and equal parts musky smell is kind of what you're getting. Like, you know, separating it from, from the blood, from the, you know, the cologne of the security guys, the shampoo of the, the scientists, you're getting a very oily kind of musk smell. Like ferrets? I've, I've never smelled a ferret. I don't know. It, it doesn't smell as offensive as a sloth. Um... It it smells less um, woolen than than an anteater. Um, it just has that that very like. Have you ever been around deer uh, during the rut? Like that almost overpowering okay. kind that, of like heavy wild yeah. animal sort of smell. It's, yeah. it's like a glandular smell. It's a very organic, predatory oh. kind of smell. Huh. Okay. And can and, I? I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, I was just gonna say is this is that that seems like it's probably the the weird little dude then, huh? No, none of these guys, uh, as Penn was looking around, had like active sustained spells on them, right? Uh, well, the the thing with with spell signatures is a signature exists at the point where it's cast. Uh, so long as the spell is being sustained, the spell itself has a signature, uh, but it doesn't like leave an astral smear or anything like that. Oh, like, oh, oh, oh no! Oh no! I meant on like any of the actual guards here. You know, maybe this oh. guy's passengering one of them. <laughs> Offensive uh, passenger. Not that has been noticed. I mean, some some of the guards okay. have a little bit of magic on them, uh, but it's like an armor spell or like a, a see in the dark spell, mm -hmm. but definitely a very much a different signature. Okay. Um, I personally don't know how going about checking their checking their. Uh, Maglock to see if it was broken with hacking or D does anybody have common sense? Yup. Would you like to spend a point of common sense? Yup. All right. So, D boss, you guys have an exact time for when the robbery took place, mm -hmm. and you have uh, 24 hours before of footage and 24 and you know up till now footage. So, a total of what like 26 hours of footage. Uh, you could just jump straight to the time hack for when you want to see stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we were, we were going to do that and see the go through that specific thing, but um, I also wanted to ask, was there any cameras that I believe might have an angle to spot a drone of some sort in the sky? There's nothing like pointed up and out. I mean, this very much has the feel of almost like an like a an office building. This isn't a black site. This isn't uh, you know guard towers everywhere. Uh, Everything's it, watching the doors and yeah, it's, it's not much know, else. Who's who's at the door? Well, security's got to buzz you in, so they got to look okay. to see who's at the door. Okay, I don't think I'm gonna get much out of this goddamn footage. Okay, we'll we'll jump to the time where just you know why we you know where they they would have to be breaking through this door. Go ahead and give me... I don't know. I just want you to roll some dice. You haven't rolled a whole lot of dice yet. 
I have security design. I can roll e warfare for uh, spotting stuff. It, it's okay. You're going to a time hack that's literally clicking on the little the little progress bar in the bottom of a YouTube video. Uh, I, uh, well, e warfare to like see stuff because it uses the perception to perceive the sensors. Mm-hmm. Well, you, you if you would like to get more details, we'll we'll throw some dice on it. Uh, as you jump to the time hack, which would be at two fifty seven in the a.m. Uh, trash is taken outside uh, by one of the uh, the security guards. Uh, you know, standard looking guy. He has a black uniform on with a ball cap, and he has you know a, a small frame pistol on his hip and a flashlight on the other side. Um, and he goes up to the door. And you see from the uh, the outside camera the door swing open, and he actually leans forward and he looks left and he looks right. He goes okay, and he walks out. And he, he's kind of got a little ditty bop going, like you know he's listening to music. And he flings the uh, trash bag into the dumpster. And as he is walking back to the door, he looks up at the camera, gives a thumbs up, and he mouths a couple of words and then laughs. And then the door will pop open, and he pulls it open. And as he's walking through the door, uh, you see what appears to be just a hand appear on the edge of the door. And the door swings open again, and the hand disappears. And then the door slowly closes shut. Goddamn invisible bullshittery. There's a, probably another print over here. All right. All right. So, yeah, there's lots of magic shit. When we find these guys, we got we to gotta light that mage up super fast. Oh, boy. Um, I mean, his magic was good enough that he felt confident enough to go through this facility and not worry about the cameras. I mean, these are, what, DR2, DR3 cameras? Eh, DR2. I mean, even then, that's a lot of that's a lot of fucking eyes and opportunities to see through this spell. So this guy, he had to be very, very confident in his ability to uh, in his invisibility. That would line up with uh, the fact that this stuff looks powerful. Yeah, more powerful I mean, than most of the stuff that I've seen. I mean, I haven't been able. I just looking through the angles, what angles we have. I mean, I've been able to identify anything that's going to give us like anything on on uh, trying to find where these guys were hiding in. Might have done recon from, so that's kind of a bust. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think I I, I think we we're pretty much petering this place out at this point. Yeah. Um. I think we should check because you said there was they were you said they were very obvious with uh, their footprints and stuff. Um, go out the that wood line there and check to see if they have broken branches and stuff that they ran through this wood line and maybe they ran back out. I mean, can we track the footprints and stuff they left and which direction they ran? I already tried to do that, man. Yeah. The, it's, 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 it's all just plasticrete outside. <laughs> the, Was the, that their helicopter or? No. Uh, um, so we're we're like in the woods, right? Yes, you have uh, approximately 100 yards surrounding the building. So you're, you're at the center of a circle with a radius of 100 yards. Um, Outside of that 100 yards is where the tree line begins, but it is very obvious that the ground has been cleared out to that 100-yard point. Which, um, just, just so you know, it's, it's not anything weird. That's a standard security thing that you do with any kind of protected area is, you know, you don't want to have trees growing right next to the building because then it's a security issue. Yeah. Um. I was wondering if I was able to get like idea of where we're at and do some searching on the local area to find another clearing that that helicopter could have been going for, because it doesn't look like these guys drove in. You are welcome to roll some area knowledge if you would like. Um, area knowledge or some kind of searching on this area, or like, oh look, Google Maps shows that there's a big fucking plane you can land a big cargo helicopter in sure thing you you do have gps on your uh, on your comm link and on your deck okay so that's gonna be area knowledge uh do you want some sort of matrix search i don't know what tier that would be uh, if you would be so kind if you could roll your if you could label your rules for me just so if i yeah. have to scroll back i can i can easily tell what they are um yeah so just just as a, a note for me as a gm uh, I have in all of the games I have GM'd, nobody has ever said what is my GPS coordinate. 
when they have a matrix signal when they're standing outside because that would tell you exactly where you are. Uh, you can tell by looking at your comlink because you're a smart Decker type person that you did that, that you guys are in uh, Maltby, Snohomish. Uh, and looking around, this is Snohomish. There's a lot of trees and there are a lot of farms and there are a lot of flat areas, but most of the flat open areas are habitated somehow. What did you say in Snohomish? Malt B. It is a B zone. So there's two things I wanted to do. Uh, one was check for a place within running or walking distance for, you know, maybe give them a few extra meters because they're souped up cyber modded, bio modded crazy people to run to. And two would be to see if they had cameras on their parking lot of some sort and just to see if any cars was missing. But I'm pretty sure they ran out into the woods. Well, you could tell from the uh, the 12,000 hits that, that Ringside got on the perception from the outside, uh, it appeared they were walking toward the road leading out of the facility. Oh, yeah, he probably, yeah. Cause either, either, so either they have a car there or he mind magic someone to drive them away. That seems to be his MO, which is the other reason he has to die immediately. Sorry. How, how would I, like, track by smell? Would I need to use the tracking skill? You would use tracking for that. I think you would use tracking, and I believe you could add your oral, oral factory boosters rating as a bonus to it. I believe that's how it works. Yes, you could. Hmm. Okay, well, I can make an attempt. Uh, I don't have it trained. I think I might pick that up after this run. We can always default on it, yeah. Well, what are you, how, like, explain to me a little more what you're trying to do. Um, I, sir, track where that smell went? Like, how did they leave the facility? Like, we have some idea how they got in. Um, we just said they, they were walking towards the road. Yeah, they, okay, they then... very clearly, when they, when they were exiting the building, um, Whatever magic that he that the, the the magic guy used on himself, the cameras were still able to see him, but the people running past him were not. Uh, they they quite literally walked out the front door. I would like to take pin and other ones and say, hey, maybe we should go check the road and see if we can find any more magic signs out there. Uh, them doing magic out there, and maybe we can find some tire tracks of because you know, the country road that the guys were pulled off the side of the road waiting for the car. And maybe as we're there, we might see some some other facility out there that may have a camera. I don't know, or uh, so a uh, speed camera trap or something out there. Uh, tell you what, Hez, why don't you give me a perception uh, scent test? Okay. Um, you can use your olfactory as a bonus to that if you so like. Yep. Another one or. Yes, I'm going to need one more because you said I'm, I'm doing this in lieu of tracking, uh, and and I'll explain happily after you throw it. There we are, sniffing down three hits. All right, so the reason I'm not calling for a tracking test necessarily for this is uh, it's it's this very heavy musky smell going in a straight line down the road. Uh, so it it literally it looks like they were just walking down the road to leave the facility to go in through the tree line. Uh, as you get past that hundred yards of grass and you're into the tree line, uh, 30 or 40 yards past that is where it connects to the main road. Uh, give me some visual perceptions if y'all don't mind. Sure. And Penn, you can see a signature for some kind of magic, uh, before this, this road intersects with the main road. Why do I even bother? I, I knew you were going to get that. I don't want the roll. Uh, ringside, you can see the uh, depression in the ground that looks like car tires. Yo, shit here. And you would say it's, yeah, from the wheelbase, they look pretty wide, like you would say probably some kind of truck something, maybe? Maybe a big van? And I'm telling, can you tell which way they sped off to? Do they, do they turn or they just keep going straight down the road? 
Well, unfortunately, oh. since that was seven effing hits. Uh, basically, you could tell from the uh, the tire tracks, uh, and uh, since the car was sitting in mud, uh, there is the definite curve of it turning to go sort of southeasty. Okay. So as it exits, basically, if you're looking at the uh, the the map where you see Malt B and the big B, uh, it's kind of at that that intersection right on the border to Redmond. Uh, and it looks like they turned kind of more to the west, like towards Turner Corner. All right. Well, there was a car here that is not currently here. Uh, so do we... I do I know of any uh, I don't know gas stations within you know a few hundred meters of this area, or anything, any like facility or any building or business that would be between here and the next place they could turn off? That's what I was just looking for. Yeah, yeah, we'll go for sure. It makes sense between two cities for there to at least be like a convenience store and a gas station. Um, do you remember our area knowledge for that again? No, you. I, 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 I have a, I have a, a general assumption that that runners have actually been through these areas, and you know, it's it's a main road going from one city to the next. Yeah, there's going to be a gas station. You can look a simple T1 search would turn it up, and with your dice pools, you don't have to worry about rolling that. Okay. Um. I would suggest that we go over there and try to either just hack the cameras and see if we can see if we haven't got a glimpse of a vehicle coming through at the approximate time, you know, on the road, if they had an angle on it, or maybe uh, twist an arm, and maybe if we maybe see if we see more magic stuff on the road. Yeah, well, um, I mean, I, I mean, there'll be plenty of like crappy wire, uh, just wireless cameras around. All we need to do is see this spot. Over the last few hours. Yeah. So, well, I don't. I doubt there's a. Ca- I doubt there's a camera on this exact spot, but like down well, the road where they were headed, there might be a camera. Sure. I mean, you know the general time frame that they would have been headed past that area. Yeah. 